Good afternoon. My name is Shirley Wallace, and I'm a member of Covenant Presbyterian Church. I've been a member here for over nine years, and I remember the first time I walked through the doors of this church, I felt like I had come home. I don't ever remember being so warmly greeted and cared for by a congregation as I was here at Covenant. The Lenten lesson for today is from Jill Duffield's book, Lent in Plain Sight, and it continues with the subject of coats. The scripture reading comes from Matthew 5, 38 through 42. And in this scripture, Jesus is telling us not to take revenge on our enemies. You have heard it said, it was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who has wronged you. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap you on the left cheek also. And if someone takes you to court to sue you for your shirt, let him have your coat also. And if someone asks you to carry his pack one mile, carry it too. And if someone asks you for something, give it to him. If someone wants to borrow something from you, lend it to him. In her devotional, Jill Duffel says, of all of Jesus' commands, teachings, and instructions, the one at the heart of giving our coat is perhaps the most difficult. We desire some form of karma or retaliation, revenge or comeuppance. Jesus instead tells us to long for and work toward reconciliation. Quite a few years ago, there was a saying going around that involved four letters, WWJD. What would Jesus do? A friend of my husband's gave him a keychain that had these letters on it, and he told them, whenever you're in a situation with a person and it's a difficult situation, look at the letters on that keychain and ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Well, that turned out to be much easier said than done. I think we have all found ourselves in situations where when someone was unkind to us or did something to us or said something that was untrue about us, our first instinct is to retaliate. I don't think Jesus meant for us not to stand up for ourselves, but what he did mean was do not take revenge on that person that wronged you. In his book, Engaging the Powers, Discernment and Resistance in a World of Domination by Walter Wink, he says, ultimately, Jesus' desire is not the defeat of our enemy, but the transformation of, the, of them into a friend. He's encouraging his followers to create encounters between people in which we look each other in the eye and see each other as fellow human beings. In a world where divisions between black and white, rich and poor, male and female, immigrant and native are profound and growing, we need to hear those words again, love your neighbor. I think too many times in today's society, we're letting our differences become overwhelming to the point that it's difficult to have a conversation with someone who doesn't agree with us and we think they are wrong. In Romans 12, 17 through 21, Jesus says, if someone does wrong to you, do not pay him back by doing wrong to him. Try to do what everyone thinks is right. Do your best to live in peace with everyone. My friends, do not try to punish others when they wrong you, but let God punish them with his anger. What we need to do in today's world is be more accepting and loving of those who are different from us. By trying to be more like Jesus in our daily lives, there may be many who would see these loving acts of kindness. One of the things that Jill Duffel tells us in her Lenten series is to have an honest evaluation of ourselves. She says, Jesus' teaching requires serious self-reflection and honest repentance because Jesus' call to his followers demands love, not abuse. In Leviticus 19, 17 through 18, the Lord says, you shall not hate your brother with all your heart, but you shall reason with your neighbor, lest you bear sin because of him. 
You shall not take vengeance or bear grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. One of the questions for reflection in today's devotional asked if you'd ever experienced wanting someone to get what they deserved or wanting to retaliate for some hurtful act. What did you do and why? I've been in a situation in my lifetime where I was hurt by another person. My first reaction was anger and resentment at how could they do that to me. I was such a nice, kind person. I didn't deserve to be treated that way. What I began to realize, though, was that my anger was making me be the kind of person that I did not want to be. What I learned was, was that it was much more important for me to forgive that person, whether they deserved it or not. If I was going to be more like Jesus, who could forgive those who nailed him to a cross, I could certainly forgive that person. And in doing so, I began to lose my anger and resentment. In his devotional on forgiveness, Rick Warren says, as long as you continue to focus on the person who hurt you, that person controls you. In fact, it even goes a step further. If you don't release your offender, you'll begin to resemble that offender. So stop focusing on the hurt and the person who hurt you. Instead, refocus on God's purpose for your life. His purpose is greater than any pain or problem you will ever have. In Ephesians 4, 31 through 32, Paul says, get rid of all bitterness and anger, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. What we need to remember is that we're all children of God and that none of us has the right to judge another person. Sometimes we're all too willing to find the things that are wrong with our neighbors, but unwilling to take a look at ourselves and our own character defects. If we're going to be more like Jesus, we need to quit trying to make everyone else be in the wrong and trying to make ourselves look perfect. In his book, Walk in Grace, Live in Love, Bob Goff says, Easter morning is the time to get up and put on our Sunday best to celebrate one of the greatest acts of love we've ever seen. We sing and proclaim the truth of God's grace on Easter Sunday, but the truth of that love is the story we tell with our lives in the days that follow. The way we love everyone around us is the way to explain what Easter is all about. What would Jesus do? What would you do? Please pray with me as I pray the prayer from today's Lenten devotional. Jesus, following your teaching demands more than we can muster. You know our weaknesses, our tendencies to hurt others, our deep-seated desire for retaliation, and even sometimes revenge. You recognize that without you, we cannot turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, or hand over our coat. Thankfully, you promise the gift of your Holy Spirit, the comforter who guides, gives us the words, and empowers us to act in ways that show your love even to our enemies. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and as always, to God be the glory. Amen.